Okay, going on to basically the work that we've done for WAG, but for you, um, which was to try and understand what four particular sectors were all about uh, and were there opportunities for Welsh companies. Um, before I go into any detail, I was, this, this was the first major project that I worked on research um, and consultancy for CBBC. Um, I was really surprised how frank and honest the Chinese companies were, um, especially in some of the sectors where CBBC, we get even told by our own embassy in Beijing that, oh, that sort of company won't talk to you. They would only talk government to government. But then we go and have a chat with them, and they're very frank about their uh, level of innovation and their demand for innovation. And in some instances, started coming out with, Ooh, actually, we could do with one of those. Or can you find one of those in Wales for us? So um, it, it, was, um, it, it was very encouraging and very pleasing to be able to put these into the final reports. Um, this first point, um, information communication technology. Not something I am totally familiar with myself and I have to rely on some of my colleagues to explain it to me quite often. Um, but it gives a very example of how it can be uh, a fractured market. Uh, apparently the IC market is very strong in Beijing and, Xiang, in, and Xi'an and Shanghai and around Shanghai is very strong in all sectors. But there was one point that actually a lot of the international companies who invest into China, some of the big guys, you know, sort of like Hewlett Packard's as well, um, when they go into the China market, they have to set up different divisions doing separate things in different areas of China just to meet what the local technology can do. Um, because they have to go to the areas where other people are doing similar things to be able to recruit the people to be able to assist them in those markets. Um, Actually, of all the four areas we looked at, this was the only one where pricing is an issue. Um, it's, again, it's, it's an intangible almost, and it's hard for uh, sometimes for Chinese to explain, for you to explain to Chinese companies why they should be paying that value. The same story goes. If you can actually come out with case studies and say, we did this for so-and-so in this very similar market to yours, and over a period of six to 12 months, it gave them this benefit in cash, you know, saved them this amount of money then people will listen. Um, but if you go in and say, oh, this is clever, it's quicker, that's not a great argument. How much cash it saves companies in China is always a very persuasive argument for why they should listen to you. Um, the, air, the ways in which you can go into development with, with Chinese companies or sell into the Chinese market, um, it's fairly open in terms of like licensing, tech transfer, uh, collaborative R&D. It's an area where IP is is a, a big issue. Um, you just have to look at any of the computer markets in any of the cities in China and see how much software is ripped off. Um, there is a, a newer issue in terms of if you sell software to the Chinese, any Chinese government departments, and that's not just ministries, that includes schools, uh, state schools, uh, you actually have to explain your code. You have to actually hand over your code, and most foreign companies won't do it. So China made themselves almost uh, uh, they close the markets, but um, they stop the innovation coming in. A lot of big companies, as I say, we're not going to sell to state-owned or uh, state sector in China because it's, it's our intellectual property. We're not so stupid as to hand it over. Mm -hmm. Automotive. Um, this is one I quite like. Um, the reason why I say that is because in the Midlands, in Birmingham, you probably know... Uh, Shanghai Automotive, uh, after many years and a lot of trouble, got around to investing in a lot of money recently in building their own R&D center. Uh, and because Saik did it, um, a few months ago, Chang'an, uh, well, after 18 months of deliberation and back and forwards and visiting sites, Chang'an Automotive also announced an investment of a quarter of a billion pounds to create 250 jobs and put in lots more money to develop their own R&D center for automotive in the UK. Um, but if any of you have been to China, you'll see there is a huge difference between the uh, Western imported cars, uh, or at the bottom here, the uh, top five foreign Chinese joint venture cars, and then what Chinese companies actually manufacture themselves. They know the difference. They know their sales aren't as good. It's fairly obvious. 60% of the market is dominated by five foreign joint ventures. 
the Chinese, pure, the purely Chinese companies, the multitude of them only share 40% of it. They want to get a bigger slice of that. The only way they can do that is increase quality. And the only way they can do that is start working with foreign companies. Um, so it's, it's across the board as well. It's not just automotive, it's also things like uh, um, uh, motorcycles as well. But that motorcycles is particularly in Chongqing. Um, but uh, I'm now working with a UK company who, without actually understanding who they should be selling the product to uh, or why, uh, actually developed a very low CO2 emission engine for motorbikes. Um, not even knowing that really all the, the, the sole market is going to be in Chongqing. Um, but they've done it, and they've got it actually licensed to or, or through Chinese standards without actually knowing who they should start to sell it to. Uh, it was quite easy for us to actually start talking to them about which companies they can go and start talking to. Aerospace. This is the area, this is the one which every UK company is always told it's state-owned enterprises. It's very difficult to sell to them. Uh, next to impossible, you'll never get anywhere with them. In fact, the only thing holding you back selling to the aerospace industry is Vince Cable, unfortunately, uh, we, because of export licensing requirements, because some nuts and bolts and wires could potentially be used in military. Therefore, sometimes some companies are blocked from exporting their products, even though there are orders from Chinese companies. It's just that sometimes these Chinese companies have two divisions within one. One makes passenger planes. Uh, one makes bombers, uh, and our government's not too happy about sharing that technology, even if it's nuts and bolts. Um, but uh, when we went to go and speak to these state-owned industries across China, they were very happy to tell us and very frank with what problems they've got and what they'd like to find, and very open about, and particularly in the aerospace industry, very frank about how they want to work with foreign companies. Now, we have a strong, strong advantage in the UK. In fact, that because in the world market, where could China go for aerospace technology? They could go to America, or they could go to Britain and France, Airbus. They're not going to go to America because Boeing can make, in America, Boeing can make every single bit of a plane all by themselves. And strategically, that's not a very clever choice for China to get into bed too closely with Boeing. However, they're quite happy to recognize that there are some very key point parts made in the UK and developed in the UK. And there are some other key parts made in Spain and in France, but not as many as made in the UK. So they are very, very keen to find as much collaborative work and purchase from UK companies. Basically, it's an open door. You can go in with pretty much anything in aerospace, knock on the door, and, it, and it's there. Um, I met up with a company who, about a year ago, I met at a conference, <laughs> and they do... Uh, wind tunnel modeling for the aviation industry. And he's like, I've come along, I don't know, is there something I could do in China? And I said, well, probably. You might want to do a bit of research. And he did one of the UK trade investment OMIS uh, research reports. It's quite a simple thing. Um, then followed up, went off to China. We helped him and his itinerary to go and meet some people. And um, within six months, he now doesn't have an MOU he actually has the contract from AVIC to SAC to do all their wind tunnel modeling for all their plane development. Fantastic. Uh, it's, it's really surprising. Um, four years ago, that would never have happened. The Chinese would look at it and say, okay, how can we do it ourselves? But now, uh, particularly in the last 18 months, aerospace industry, very, very open, very uh, willing to work on your terms in the aerospace industry. <coughs> 